Hello everyone and welcome back. Now in the previous video we talked a lot about fixed points and in the one before that we talked about the sort of geometric perspective of differential equations on the line. Now what I'd like to do in this brief video is talk a little bit about the theory. In particular I want to talk about existence and uniqueness of solutions. Now again this is something that I have spoken about before in some of my previous lectures, particularly those in ordinary differential equations. So I'm going to refer you to uh, those lectures for a more in-depth discussion of what I want to talk about today. But in particular what I want to focus on is the idea of existence and uniqueness and how it pertains to my geometric way of analyzing dynamical systems. I want to do it with an example. Okay, here's my example. Let's look at x dot is equal to the cubed root of x. Okay, now let's, let's think about this for a second. The phase space here could be the entire real line. There's no restrictions on taking a cube root, right? So it's not like a square root, I'm not going to wind up in the complex domain. Everything's all good. I have a fixed point. at x equal to zero. Okay, so if I put zero in, I get zero back out. But also, I could just solve this differential equation, right? So I also have a solution. And that solution, again, I'm gonna leave this to you. You can have your fun with this. This is three over two x to the two thirds is equal to t plus c. Okay, so if you do just this sort of straight separation of variables, this was what you would get. I didn't rearrange for x yet because I'm not there, but I could take x of zero equal to zero. I could use that initial condition. Now, first of all, my geometric approach told me that if I take x of zero equal to zero, I'm at a fixed point and I stay at x equal to zero always. But in this case, I would get c is equal to zero, which would give me x of t is equal to two thirds t to the three over two. This function is not always zero. This is conflicting information, right? This gave me two solutions for the same initial condition. One of them is sitting at the equilibrium point for all time. That's my geometric sort of approach. Whereas the other one, this is a legit function of t, right? I mean, this is a very, very sort of uninteresting, unremarkable, you know, power is 1.5, but it's a function of t. It's not sitting at zero always. So what went wrong, right? Well, we can look at some actual theorems from mathematical analysis and dynamical systems theory to tell us maybe, you know, when we should expect our geometric approach to fail. Because I emphasize the geometric approach failed miserably here. So let's take a look at the existence and uniqueness theorem associated to these types of equations. Okay. So the theorem says if we consider x dot is equal to f of x um, and an initial condition. Remember, we always need two things when we consider dynamical systems. We have to know where we start and we have to know how we move. Now, let's suppose f and f prime uh, are continuous. on an open interval containing x naught. Okay, then the existence uniqueness theorem tells us that then there exists a unique, the exclamation mark means unique, uh, x of t solution with x of 0 equal to 0 for all t in some interval. So I'm going to say from minus tau to tau, I can go backwards in time and go forwards in time for some positive tau. It doesn't tell me how big it is. It just tells me that I can move a little bit forward in time 
and a little bit backwards in time. That's it. Now, the first thing that I want you to put note of here is where my previous example failed. F and F prime have to be continuous on an open interval containing the initial condition. My initial condition here was zero. The original function F is very much continuous on the entire real line, but its derivative has a negative exponent, negative two thirds. It's not continuous at zero. That's where the existence uniqueness theorem failed. And that's why I got a non-unique solution. I got two solutions. Unique means only one. We can only apply our geometric theory when this existence uniqueness theorem actually applies, okay? So that just means, you know, for all intents and purposes, we really just need to have F and its derivative to be continuous. And again, this should make sense, right? We've We've seen its derivative showing up in linear stability analysis, taking things like Taylor expansions. To do Taylor expansions, you need smoothness. You need differential continuity here. Let's take an example. Okay, let's do one plus x squared. Okay, so the first thing, I do a little simple calculus check. The right-hand side is continuous and its derivative is continuous everywhere, okay? So does that mean that the existence uniqueness theorem tells me my solution exists for all time? No, right? Be very careful. As long as these are, these are satisfied, it says that my solution can move forward and backward in time for some amount of time, but it doesn't say for all time. So we should be very, very careful here. You can actually solve this thing. Okay, so if you find a solution to this, you can get tan inverse of x is equal to t plus c. Okay, so again, I'm just using separation of variables. I'm only doing this for x position. And let's do x of 0 is equal to 0, just so I can get rid of that c. And this gives me x of t is equal to tan of t. Okay, so nice, simple equation. Nice simple solution, right? The solution of my differential equation is tan of t. Now, what's the domain of tan of t? This exists for all t from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's it. All right? What does the tan look like? It's sort of this sideways s curve. So what does that mean? My solution doesn't exist everywhere, even though I could easily draw a phase line diagram for this. Phase line diagram, boom. No equilibria, everybody's moving to the right. That's my phase line diagram, that's the geometric approach. It tells me everybody's moving to the right. Everybody is moving to the right with the tan function here, right? You're blowing up as time goes to infinity. But you're doing it in finite time. You blow up at time equal to pi over 2. You do not exist for all time. If you asked me, what does my solution look like for t equal to, let's say, pi, for example? Doesn't exist, right? It started at 0. It ended at pi over 2. So you should be very, very, very careful here, right? This is what's called a finite time blow up. And it is hidden from our geometric interpretation. You have to be very careful here. Okay? So this is finite time blow up. It's blowing up because it's going to infinity. We also talk about going to minus infinity as blowing up as well. Right? So there's no sort of directionality that's, that's taken in here. If I go backwards in time, I go to minus infinity. But it is very much hidden, right? You don't see it in my phase line diagram. It's not there. But it is very much, you know, in the solution. Okay, so you have to be very careful about this. And different values of C are going to give you different values of blow up as well, right? It's going to shift around this tan function a little bit. And it's going to tell you, you know, when you, can, when you will blow up and what the maximal interval, interval is. So you have to be very careful. Theorems in mathematics are extremely precise and they are extremely cautious. This just says that as long as you can satisfy these conditions, which our first example didn't, 
then the solution exists for some amount of time. It doesn't say it exists forever, even though our phase line diagram makes it look like it does. So be very, very, very careful about this. Now, there's actually an interesting consequence of this thing and of this existence uniqueness theorem. And it actually tells me that fixed points are all I need to care about, okay? So remember, when I gave you the geometric in, uh, interpretation of dynamical systems, I said, really, I'm just going to care about fixed points. And you maybe said, okay, well, I'm going to trust you, Jason, but you should ask why, right? Why is it that I'm interested in just fixed points? Well, it turns out nothing else interesting can happen. In fact, remember I told you that you're sort of flowing forward and eventually you hit that fixed point? The question is, why can't you go through it? and come back maybe, for example? Well, the existence and uniqueness theorem tells us that we cannot have oscillations. You can't go backwards and forwards on the line, right? Because in one case, let's draw this out. So if I have my picture, this is my X. Let's say I start from right here and flow forward. If I have a solution, that looks like that. It comes back to where it started, right? It's X values come back. That means that if originally it was moving upwards, then eventually it's got to come backwards to turn around. But that means that the derivative is pointing to the right at one point, but then it's also pointing to the left. And that means that you have two different solutions, one of which is going to the right, one of which is going to the left, and this is violated by the existence of uniqueness theorem. So as long as we can apply the geometric approach, we can make a lot of assumptions about the system. For example, the geometric approach is very much legitimate. I can't turn around. The only thing that can happen here uh, is that, so only interesting thing, So outside of finite time blow up, the only interesting thing is that x of t converges to a fixed point as t goes to infinity. If it doesn't blow up, then the only thing it's going to do is go to a fixed point. It can't oscillate, it can't bounce around, it can't turn around. You know, you're sort of stuck on this line, right? There's nowhere to go. You can't jump out of the line. You have barriers on every side. There are no periodic solutions. You cannot turn around. That is a very, very important piece of this. You can never reverse the direction you're moving in. If you're setting a course on this line and you start moving in this direction, you are always going to go in that direction. The only thing you can do is run into a fixed point. Otherwise, you could blow up to infinity. That's it. Very, very, very simple, but it is extremely important to understand how this the existence of uniqueness theorem actually applies to our situations, why it failed in this example, why the geometric approach failed in this example. Okay, when we come back, we're going to talk about another geometric approach that is based on physics, energy potentials. Uh, so it might be complementary to what we've already seen. Hopefully, it helps you to get a firmer understanding on what we've been talking about.